Okay, everyone, welcome. Next class. I think we've been a little uh, bad about uploading, so I'll try to get better. So let's start with L'chaim. Last week we couldn't have L'chaim, it was in nine days, but uh, that's why Eric didn't go. Baruch atah adinoy elehidim achalab sha'akol neyeh b'dvari. Okay, so we, we, are, we just started chapter four. In chapter four, we are introduced to the Levushin, the three garments, the three methods of expression. And the reason why they're called garments is because garments, by definition, are not, are not one with you. You change your garments based on how you want to express yourself. See, by a wedding, you're dressed more formal. By the beach, you're dressed more relaxed. You come to synagogue, some people are dressed like the beach. Some people are dressed like the wedding. <laughs> Welcome to Chabad. <laughs> South, South Florida. Yeah. Right, yeah. Not just Chabad. Right. <laughs> Um, the weddings in Israel, I, with, would, I would dare to say some of them are with flip flops. Yeah, I, we once yeah, had a guy I, in the show. flip flops at a wedding. We once had a guy funny. in show. He used to come to short, came shorts and, and tank top. Mm -hmm. But for some reason it bothered him, the guy came in flip flops. He came over to me, Rabbi, can you believe it? A guy came to synagogue in flip flops. <laughs> I'm like, eh. <laughs> 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 But garments, garments are. Oh, they, they protect you, but they also express. So when you, you have your your, your nefesh kiss, your godly soul, for the first um, uh, five chapters, we're only going to talk about the, the godly soul. Chapter six, we'll start talking about go back to the animal soul again. But you have the godly soul. Now, how does the godly soul find expression? Through terror, terror, uh, which is thought, speech, and action of terror. Learning terror, davening, speaking words of prayer, and and doing and doing the mitzvahs. Now, we're about to learn something. Crazy. I thought I was going to say something really, really revolutionary. What's more important, you or your clothing? You. Right? I almost said yes. You? But I knew well, that was going to be wrong. It depends. No. It you depend. or your clothing? Yeah, you. Right? What's more important, your neshama? Or your body? Or your machshava dibar maisa? Or your thought, speech, and action? Your neshama. Your neshama. Your machshava, your your thought, speech, and action are in one with God. Your soul is one with God. We learned that in chapter one, in chapter two. I thought I was going to say, you know, you know what the problem the soul has? It's, it's immobile. It can't go anywhere. It's great. I have all this. I have all this talent. I have all this ability. But I'm I'm locked up. I'm uh, no hands, no legs, nowhere to go. All this money, isn't that saying? No, all this money, nowhere to go. Kind of like my wife, that she doesn't have her driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, right? So, so you're, you're her hands and legs. So al is going to say that because the soul needs the thought, speech, and action to, to be, become elevated, so in, in a way, your thought, speech, and action is greater than your soul. So, for a sec, let me give you an example. This is not something I can relate to because I don't do chin-ups. You can't lift yourself up by your, from yourself. When you want to go higher, you can't pull yourself up. You can't lift yourself up from yourself. From yourself. You want to do chin-ups. You need something above you to... I've just been watching a lot of competition rock climbing. And, and? what do you mean? And? <laughs> they pull themselves up like they're superhuman, no. like like physical no, laws they, don't but, exist. But they're using a rock. They're, they're holding, using a rock. They're, they're, they're holding themselves up. Uh, no, but they, but they're grabbing something to lift them up. You can't just decide to levitate. That's that's called that's called super. That's called David Blaine. Oh. Clark Clark Kent. I mean, yeah, sure. Captain um, <laughs> Depending which universe don't, don't, you want to be. Don't in. know that one. But um, it's a nice Jewish boy. Nice Jewish boy. Oh, good. Our, 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 all the uh, all the superheroes. So the, the, the so because the nefesh, because the the godly soul needs the thought, speech, and action to become elevated. So in a way, your thought, speech, and action is even higher than your soul. Makes sense. No. Why not? I don't want it. Because your soul sees it is still the it's it's connected it's it's one with God, like uh, you said. A hundred percent. 
great. Now what? I can't do anything. What's greater, a human being or an angel? Okay. Human being. What holy? What holier? What if you have someone that can't speak and can't uh, no. can't take action? Okay. So, so let, let, let's say let's say you have Stephen Hawking's mind without the uh, without the mechanics, without his thing. You can be great as genius. You would never know. Much much smarter than you, me, everyone around. But you know, I know my cousin with the ALS. Yitzi. Yeah, great guy. So let's say, I think maybe Stephen Hawking is a good example. Let's say, you think there was no Stephen Hawking 100, 200 years ago before all this? I'm sure there are, there are great people, uh, paraplegics, it's, or... It's the wheelchair technology that's advanced. That's wheelchair, that's what it is. You, you, you see that joke, by the way, with Stephen Hawking? Well, Stephen Hawking's last words? Do do do! Get out the windows. <laughs> you didn't see that one? That's gonna run. <laughs> it's kind of dark there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you should have been here last week. I don't remember last week. <laughs> anyway, it wasn't recorded. No, it was recorded. It was not loaded. Anyway, so the the idea is, you could be Stephen Hawking, but you still need your computer to express yourself. You're right, your thought, speech, and action isn't value in and of itself. But because your thought, speech, and action serve as a tool, as a chinabar, to lift us all, so then your chinabar has to be above you to lift yourself up. That's what, that's what he's going to say. When you utilize your capability to learn terror, to, to, to pray, to action, you, you are higher than your soul. Your physical self, your speech and action is higher than yourself, the soul. Because you're elevating the soul. Hmm. Let's learn it inside. Bottom of 79 in the old print, page 81 in the new print. So until now, it's explained that the divine soul had three garments in which it clothes itself. Thought, speech, and action. The Rebbe now goes on to state that unlike physical garments, which are less important than the wearer, the garments of the divine soul are even loftier than the, than the soul who wears them. Thus, wearing its garments, thinking, speaking words of Torah, acting and performing a mitzvah, elevates the soul to a higher level. For since Torah and the commandments are one with God, the Jew, by donning those garments of Torah and commandments, also becomes united with them. Let's let, let learn inside the altar of his words. Again, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask and interrupt. And now, these three garments, Matayr, Mitzvah, Saf, and Torah, and its mitzvahs, Although they're called garments, which usually means they're secondary, for the for the for the soul, the three types of soul we, we learned uh, in the past. In kolzeh, still, because of their function, gevoya they are they're very very high and very great. My locates infinitely higher. Because remember this, the soul is a created being. Just like angels are created beings. Angels are locked their level. Soul is a soul. The only, the only way a soul is, is, achieves advancement is because of the thought, speech, and action down here. So a soul is on, a, it, there are three stages to a soul's journey. Before it descends into a body, while it's in the body, and afterward. Soul doesn't die. There's no such thing as death. Death is, death is for the body. Death is not for the soul. It's before, during, after. Before, the soul is. Wherever it is, it is. It can't, it can't change its social status. Kind of like it, it, it was in India, they had the caste system still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't change your level. You're born into that family. That's what you are. You come, then the soul goes to the United States. The land of opportunity. You can do whatever, you can, be, you can achieve whatever you want. But then... Yeah, your visa is going to expire, and you got to go back to India. And once you go back to India, you're locked. Whatever, whatever you achieved, you achieved. S same thing. That's why America is the greatest country in the world. Because anyone, can, can anyone could become anything. You could be the lowest, come from the lowest family, no, no, no pedigree, no money, and you, you could achieve uh, great things. That's why the physical world is the most important place. 
Because up there, yeah, great. The soul is experiencing all these perfect things, but the soul is locked. It cannot achieve. That's why it says in the Midrash that the souls and the angels would give, would give everything away to come down here to say, Amen Yehei Rabbah. Because over there, they realize the opportunity is over here. So it's only via the physical body, the thought, speech, and action uh, uh, that uh, allow the soul to achieve, I mean, meaning to, to be elevated. That's why your body, is, in, in some ways, is greater than the soul. Now you know why you have to respect the person's body when they pass away. That you can't just burn a body or, or denigrate it. You can't. Even, you know, you can't even talk anything when 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 you when you're. When you're preparing a person for burial, you can't speak unless it's something to do with the with the burial. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You're in the presence of holiness. Look, yeah. the neshama is still there, right? No, it's the body. The neshama is gone. The person's dead. Well, doesn't it take some time for the? Yeah, do, yeah, no, it's That's true. What I thought, yeah. yeah, you know, no, no, it really does. But, but, but the soul has the part of the body. But you respect the body. The respect is for the body. A, a Jew's body is holy. I was thinking about this all week. This thing. We were given a body to take care of. And that's a, a way for Hashem to measure us with how much we are dedicating to ourselves, to take care of ourselves, the things we put in our body. We were given our body as a tool to achieve, to be productive. Yeah. And in order for your, you got to think of your body as a car. Imagine I told you, you know, not like these days you have leases. You know, I told you, you got one car, and this is your car. Better be a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, so however, you treat it however you want to. So when Hashem tells you to eat kosher, Hashem tells you to take a day off once a week. He's, he's, yeah, aside from the spiritual side, but there's also a material benefit yeah. to, to it as well. Well, that's that's not here. Like it says in the Zohar, that Hashem and His Torah are one. Remember, we we, we said, and he's going to quote it here, and also. This means that the Torah is Hashem's wisdom, and Hashem's wisdom and His will are one with God. And by God, everything's one. Like we quoted in chapter two, Maimonides said. Remember, we learned that by human being, there's three parts. There's your, there's your hard drive, where you store the information. There's your intellectual capacity to, to process information. Then you have the information that you're trying to learn. So there's three things. By God, all those three are one. And we discussed this in chapter two, remember? So it's not like you have God, and he, and he thought, and he's, one day he sat back and came up with this, it's oh, amazing idea, Torah. But the Torah is sort of outside of him, and he thought of it. No, no, Hashem and his wisdom are one. So when you're learning Torah, that's the, that's the greatest unity you can have with God. Because you may, you, you, let's say you're a, you're a great friend, and you're, you're such good friends, you kind of know what each other's. I'll give a terrible example. I, I, have, I have these two friends, with the twins. We were very close. I mean, I live in Florida. One lives in California. One lives, we're still friends, but we spent we were in yeshiva together. We're very close. One time we went to play basketball, and there was three other guys there. So okay, well, let's do a three on three. We destroyed them, not because we were great at basketball, because we just knew. I knew he was going to be there. We, you know, when you when you're on, when you're on the same playing field, when the same mind right, playing, then it, it, it's a strong, it's a very strong unity. When you're learning Torah, you're inside God's brain. But it, it, it doesn't mean we're all now in the same, like, dimension or something. What does that right? mean? Like, I'm not sure about dimension. To me, the word dimension, I, I think of like a, Okay, okay, let's Like Star it. Wars. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're giving the example that you knew where your friends are, not because you were a better basketball player. No. Say, but, but we were very when, close. But when we learn Torah, and let's say we learn it together, does it put us in, like, like, I don't know, like a place together in a way? Well, yeah. It says, it says in Perkevis, when people gather together to learn Torah, <coughs> the Shekhinah is one of them. 
Well, first of all, I think the premise of your question is is is, is backward. Jewish people are one. We're one. And we're going to get this to this in chapter thirty-one or thirty-two. We are one. We only perceive ourselves as separate. It's when we put Torah first, Judaism first, and everything else second, we see the unity. It's when we put materialism first and Judaism second, then we, that's when we have problems. It doesn't mean we're all the same. So we, we, we're able to see the unity. There's only one Torah, and, we, and it's God's Torah. Now, the beautiful thing from God is like, he, he, um, you know, instead of the, the uh, dollar bill, which says, e pluribus unum, it's e unum pluribus. From the one comes the many. That's the difference. That's what, this is one of the great things about God. See, when you have a company and you have a mold, the same thing is going to come out every single time. God created man, for example, and I'm sure Adam looked like somebody. I mean, himself. He had an image, right? But all, all humanity, everyone's different. Everyone's different. People look alike, similar, but everyone's different. Right? No two snowflakes look alike. That's, that's the greatness. And, and the idea is, not that one is more godly than the other. No. Everyone is equally godly. So if you look exactly like me, and if you behave exactly like me, and you appreciated the things I liked, it would be a big deal for me to respect you, for me to like you. I was like, like, what do you mean? It's like looking in a mirror. Well, you can wake up in the mirror and say, it's a good looking mirror right there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously you like yourself. To like, to like somebody, appreciate somebody because they, because they have the same interests in you, what you do is you like yourself. The, 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 but but what, what the Tanya is going to teach us is really we all we all have one we're all one it's all a question of how you look at it we all start at the same place yeah it's true we go in different places but I like the Meneer that, that's exactly what the Meneer represents the Meneer has branches going in different directions it's all connected to the center so when you learn Torah you're getting back you're getting back to the core because Hashem is one and his, and his intellect is one and his, and his Torah is his intellect so you're achieving that, that um, now, now that I was going to ask a, 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 very, a very strong question if God's unlimited which usually I mean you can't define God but usually when you think of God what, what comes into your mind Limit, limitless learning on Monday so I hope that air and the lights don't uh, <laughs> on Tuesday I have a program so if something pops up at you know, 9 o'clock I'm so giving you a fair warning um, just hope the alarm doesn't go off no alarm's not going to go off okay. so usually when you think of God you think of it unlimited you think of human beings you think of finite that's usually right, you start at, what defines a human being or the world around us there's a beginning a middle and an end mm -hmm. what and you can't use the word defined because God is indefinable but the attribute that you usually think about when you think about God is unlimited, infinite now there is no relationship between infinite and finite what's closer to infinity, one or a billion the answer is, they're both irrelevant billion is not closer to infinity because it's more, it's just more li it's more of limit. So if God is unlimited and we're finite, how could we understand Torah? You ever think about that? How, the how? We all learn Torah, God's wisdom. See, I could, you come up with an idea, I can understand it because you're a human being. I'm a human being. But God it's an infinite creature. You know like in the movies, aliens always have human, always have human features? And aliens always speak English somehow? Why? No, E.T. didn't speak English. E.T. had to learn English. All right, be quiet. He had to phone home for and help. And when he, exactly. he learned English, he, he spoke button. English. So, he spoke <laughs> English. But, but yeah, why? He learned Reese's Pieces Kosher? Who? Reese's Candies. E.T., sir. Oh. oh yeah. Reese's Pieces. <laughs> Nachal Yes, correct. So the, so the idea is, why? Why do we, when we make aliens... They always, speak, they always speak our language or look like us because we can't imagine something outside of us. We're locked into our own experience. 
So how do we how do we learn Tayr? Tayr is from a use your word a different dimension. It is. Imagine I went to I went to a, a person a thousand years ago, and I told him about the phone. Forget the airplane because a flying ship. All right. They have birds. They have ships. A, a wagon without a horse. A car. A phone. In its form today. It's yeah. a box that you can talk into. It's not connected to anything, and somebody somewhere else hears it. And you can and, it, and you can never get lost. Uh, my wife uh, gets <laughs> lost with that thing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> she's from a thousand years ago. <laughs> my wife loses her mind. Oh, We're always my, my my daughter gets very nervous at ways north. How am I supposed to know which way is north? Right? <laughs> Use your star map. Yeah, exactly. But but it is. How do we how do we learn the Torah? Think about it. How, do how is it? How how does the A plus B equals C? How do you learn? How how could it be that you could understand there? Aren't we born with it? Well, is it uh, so what wait, we wait. This is the thing I heard from my mom. Like we we are past the entire Torah yeah. through our, our mothers, right? Well, the Medrash says that when a baby's in utero. He's taught the Torah. So in a way, it's just a clipper, right? That we need to... No, in, in order to, we have to relearn. Instead of learning it fresh, we're yeah, relearning. Relearn. But even that, how how could you teach? How could a, a finite being understand God's wisdom? So, let's not say. This is anyway. why it takes thousands of years and thousands of rabbis to explain it to us. <laughs> exactly. The Afsha Kaddish Baruch Hu Nikra Ein Soif Page 81 in the old print. 83, right? Top of 83 in the new print. But Afsha, Kodesh Baruch Hu Nikra, Ein Saif. Although God is called Ein Saif Infinite, Udu Cheker, like we say in um, in Asherah, and His greatness cannot be fathomed. Not that God is great. Oh, He's so great. God can pick up. No, 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 no. No, you can't understand His greatness. That's why God's undefinable. Because whatever you say about Him, it'll be it'll be a limit. And no mind can can grasp him, even the greatest mind, even Moshe Rabbeinu, no matter what. There is still a level of, of darkness. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if you can't understand him, you can't understand his wisdom or his will, because we just said it at the last page. He and his will are one. Like it says in, 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 in Job, in Eov, there's no, there's no search of his understanding. And it says, "You're going to think you're going to find God. We you think you lock yourself in a cave, a cave for 30, 40 years. You'll figure it out. It's not. It's not an attainable goal. You save and, and why? And we read this on the fast day, in in the Torah in the afternoon. One of the things we and we read and we say this on a sad day because usually on a sad day, on a tragic day, we say, God, why, why, why? And the prophet asked God the same thing. Yishayo asked God the same thing. What does Hashem tell Yishayo? Your thoughts are not my thoughts. We're, we're different. We operate differently. So, you know, it's like you, you want to use, you know, you want to use analog antennas to, to get digital. I mean, Larry would probably, I, I don't think it's possible. It's like different. You want, to, you, you want to use a radio to watch TV. You can't. You don't have the right tools. So how, how can we learn to hear? So the answer is going to be like this. You're right. It shouldn't be that way. But let me ask you a, a different question. How, how does the world exist? If godliness is, and godliness always is, but let, me, let me take a step back because I'm, I'm, I'm ready to give you an answer. There's a massive argument between Kabbalists that was settled by the Arizal in the 1500s. Before the Arizal, or Yitzchak Luria came along, the, the, the running theory was that in order for God to create the world, he had to put himself to the side. Because in the presence of godliness, there can't be, there can't be any other existence. Because when God exists, how can you say, I also have an opinion. But you sitting here, what you're basically saying without saying is I exist. Punch you? Mm -hmm. No, I hurt you. I hurt your existence. Right. I take. <laughs> 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 right? 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 I'm saying if I go, if I go take, uh, go take, take your car, you feel threatened. 
be bothered by my existence. But we're consumed with our existence. We're all consumed with our existence, which is okay. It's normal. That's where we are. But God is the only true existence. We say it every day. Right? This week's Pasha. I said, sorry, last week's Pasha. They, they take the heart up in the heavens, down below. There's only, there is no, no other existence. So how does the world exist? So the running theory was for many, for many years that God put himself to the side. He, he hid himself. And in that vacuum, in that void, he created the world. So the world exists in a void of godness. Came the Rizal and said, the greatest capitalist of all time, and said, no. <laughs> what are you talking about? Because the play is void of God. It actually goes against the verse. Mm -hmm. It's the verse that says that there is no place void of me. What do you mean there's no one? So what did God do? It's a trick. Part of the power of infinite is the power to be finite. Because if you say God doesn't have that power, you're limiting his infinity. If you say I'm all powerful, God is all powerful, then part of his power is to, is to hide the infinity and to express the, fi the, F, the finite. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. God didn't. So he is infinite, infinite. So right now, in our, but uh, he, if he wants, which he's doing now, right now, he be, he's expressing. He so, let, so let's say, for example, I have the power to be nice, to be mean, cruel, compassionate. Let's say Eric needs help. He says, you know, Rabbi, can you help me? Now I have the I have the power, the ability, based on free choice to say, Eric, go fly a kite, or, or I can, I can help him. So, what, what God did, what expressed the world was, he suppressed, or com compressed, or, or contracted, limited his, the, the infinity part of it, because nothing finite can be present in the space of his, in the presence of his infinity. And, and he, he allowed the finite part of it to be expressed, and that's why we have a world. Similarly, with his intellect, you're right. The, 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 so, it, it says in the Medrash that they learned Torah in the Garden of Eden. When the soul, when the person passes away, even before, what are they doing? What are the souls doing the whole time? They're in, they're in spiritual Myrtle Beach. They're on the back line. Exactly. Yeah, right? Hole in ones every time. Hey, bam! <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice, huh? So... No, that would be that would be born. Yeah, hole in one. Uh, if, if, every if, time you hit yeah. the hole and got a hole in one, exactly. After after the first three or four games you're doing that, it's gonna yeah. What? Like, so so what are they doing? They're learning tears. Now, when a soul is divested of a body, it loses its connection to the physical world. You think the souls understand what's going on down there? Like for, so, for example, th there's a part in the Torah where it talks about if, if I have a cow or an animal, and you dug, you dig a hole, a pit, in the public property, my animal falls in, so you have to pay me back money. You think up there in the Garden of Eden, whatever it is, the souls are. You think they understand cows and pits and holes and money? That means the Torah exists on multiple different planes. So, a meaning that. God compresses it and 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 the packages it so that the souls can understand it over there and it is and in this kindness God allows us to understand so for example there are certain mitzvahs we understand and certain mitzvahs we don't we don't understand if let's say God can we didn't understand not a single mitzvah would it make a difference let's say for we didn't understand why we couldn't kill people it doesn't make sense. It wouldn't make a difference. You still can't kill people. The fact that we can understand, that's a plus. That's a, that's a gift, so to speak. You know, if a kid asks, why, why do I have to do that? So the father or mother can say, I mean, I don't have to explain it to you, but I'll explain it to you. So in order for us to be able to understand, God sort of compressed it and packaged it like a little USB, so to speak, and said, here is the information. You're right. Really, it's it's kind of crazy, but but God, but God, it was God um, that's what God did, and that's what He says. 
um, it, it, the answer page, uh, old page 82. New. Oh, yeah, in the bottom of page 83. He nails the Amru. This is what the sages say. You want to know where you find greatness? You want to know where you find greatness? This is a lesson, by the way, for humanity. Some people think, well, I'm so important, I'm not going to talk to the low person. Well, I'm going to mistreat. I'm going to mistreat the waiter, the busboy, you know, the doorman, because I'm, I'm an important person. That guy's not a good guy. He's not a great person. The great person is the one that sees value in every single person. Meaning, the great teacher is not the one who can blow his, his students away by being so far above them and, oh, wow, he's the genius. Do you understand? No, I didn't understand because he's so unbelievable smart. That's not a teacher. The teacher, this is from a Hayyem a comment from last week, the, the previous rabbi says, the greatness of Mashiach is, is that although he's going to be able to teach Torah to Moshe Rabbeinu, Mashiach is going to teach Torah to Moshe Rabbeinu and Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, to Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he'll still be able to teach Torah to little kids. It's the spectrum, right? What makes God great isn't that he's up there. You know, let, let, let's go off on a tangent. One of the biggest problems people have about miracles, You know, the Jewish people went out of the desert. They went out of Egypt, sorry. They experienced the greatest miracles of all time. The plagues, the splitting of the sea, the revelation of God at Sinai. And then they made, then they made a golden calf. And one, of the, and one of the questions that's bothered commentators from then until now is how? How do these people? Because you want, you want to know what happened? It was all God flexing. Look at me. Look what I can do. There was, it was, it was no, the Jewish people are experiencing at their level. See, the reason why the first tablets were broken and the second tablets were whole until now, because the first tablets were all about what God showing his boss. Okay, thank you, your boss. How, how, you know, how does that help me? You know, like, you know, the old, the old joke. There, there was a lion, goes over to a, a, a fox, says, who's the king? He pins him to the ground. You're the king. You're the king. You're the king. Fine. You know, lions walking. You know. He goes over to, uh, you know, some other uh, hyena. Punches him. Uh, who's the king? Who's the king? Uh, you're the king. You're the king. The lion goes over to an elephant. Who's the king? Such punching the elephant. The elephant not gonna have any. You, know? <laughs> you don't know the answer. Fine. You don't get up to all upset. You know. <laughs> Meaning, the fact that God's flexing. What is that gonna do with me? The reason why the second tablet stayed was because the Jewish people learned. They personalized it. So that, that's what makes God great. Meaning, you know, coming to Shalom Rosh Hashanah is great. And having a Passover Seder, um, that's very important. Very important. If you want to know what defines Judaism, come to Shul on a, on a Thursday morning. It's 46.45. No, we're good. No, but... It, but it, I'm not worried. You can tap all <laughs> no, you want. No, 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 no. no. What, I'm, what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, I, I just give you an example because the person coming. You know, some people going back to the marriage. You know, you know, you know what marriage is about? Taking out the garbage. Yeah, that's what, that, that's what it is. It's not about the big honeymoon or vacation. I, you know, there's, it's written down somewhere that it's a, a, a good blessing to have a peace in the home is to fold your talis on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's, where it's written. At the end of Shabbat, you fold the talis. It's a, it's a good, it's a good blessing to have peace in the home. Shalom, shalom bayit. Someone once asked the Rebbe, "What's an, another thing you can do for shalom bayit for peace in the home?" The Rebbe said, "Do the dishes." <laughs> Sometimes we like to complicate the issue, right? But the truth of the matter is, relationships are in the small things. So the fact that God's great up there, it's great. But what, what makes God really great is He gave us the ability to understand Him. That's greatness. Although we're insignificant. He gave us the ability to understand him. That's what makes him great. It says, "Betzim to Makadosh Baruch." We say, "We'll, we'll do until the second table." Betzim to Makadosh Baruch Hu. Betzayinu Chachmasay. Hashem contracted, compressed his will and wisdom. Betariyag mitzvot atara of the Chasei and the six hundred and thirteen commandments and and their laws. Ubetzirufi Oisis Torah and the Nevi'im Kesavim and and the letter combination of Torah 
third of him, Ksavim the Tanakh, which is saying should be a good ice, Midrash, Midrash, Chachmain, and the Med, and the Midrashim, and the Gadot, we find. The Chte, in order, why do you do all this? Shakol Nisham, every Nisham, or Yeruach, and Nefesh, should be good for Adam, Tuchal, Asim, Badata. Everyone could understand. There's no such thing as, oh, I'm too stupid. I can't learn Torah. Everyone has a level of Torah that they can they connect, connect with. Some people it's Kabbalah, some people it's Medrash, some people it's Kamar, some people it's Chumash. It's a, no, because you don't want to know why what you're really saying is, you're limiting yeah. God's, let's, let's go off on a side tangent just to express this guy there. We just came from Tisha B'Av. Many people when they experience tragedy in their life, suffering, the question is, where was God? God was absent, but, but you're shaking. Your head, but most people have that. Have that. That's the that, that's the initial initial reaction. Where was God? God forgot about me. God was absent. I'm not minimizing the pain. Obviously, that, that's that's not the purpose of what I'm saying here. But if a person believes in God properly, when I say properly means if you're going to think of God as some superhuman, it's not God. God is omnipotent, omnipresent, all able, all almighty, right? Really? You think God forgot about you? God was absent? So you think God can... So, let me give you a biblical reference. That's, that's the best one. Moshe comes to the burning bush. And God tells Moshe, all right, guys. I mean, tell, tell, tell the Jewish people that, all right, I'm, I'm here. So Moshe says to God, Really? Jewish people can ask the question, the Holocaust question. Holocaust question. Where were you? Now you're back? And during the 90 years of terrible suffering, we, 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 you just want to walk. You, you, you imagine a husband, you know, goes, he goes on a week vacation to, you know, stop, you know, stop telling his wife to Myrtle Beach, plays golf, whatever it is, a month, two months, whatever it is. <laughs> he comes into the house as if it's a regular Monday. Honey, what's for dinner? <laughs> what's for dinner? <laughs> You got some explaining to do, Lucy, right? <laughs> so that, that, was, that was Moshe's question. Where were you? So what, the, what does Hashem answer? Some ludicrous, it seems on the surface, some ludicrous answer. I will be what I will be. That's an answer? Honey, I, I, at least uh, be happy I'm home. That's an answer? You use that one on my wife. Right. <laughs> try. I don't try. recommend it. <laughs> yeah. So what the commentaries really explain is Hashem is teaching Moshe to teach the Jewish people. I will be what I will be, meaning I was there in the dark moments, I'm there in the happy moments. Your problem is you think I'm absent. That's a limitation on God. It's a, it, it's a defect in your belief in God. It's not, again, I'm not saying it's easy. It's, life presents us with struggles that it's hard. That's why there are books, there are amchal, um, it, it deals with it at, at length, you know, about faith and trust. Because life presents us with, you know, where one plus one doesn't equal two. I, I'm sitting here talking like, from a soapbox. Uh, listen, people go through unfathomable suffering and tragedy. I'm, I'm not, I'm talking about general perspective. So God has the ability to compress his intellect. In, even so, an idiot like me can understand it. And no matter how big an idiot you are, no matter where you're starting from. Rabbi just called me an idiot. <laughs> That can't be the first time. It's recorded too. <laughs> no matter how big of a moron you think you are, how incapable you think you are, there's a level of terror that speaks to you. Because to say otherwise and say that, oh, I'm too far gone, God can come this low. Then you're not believing in God. Then we have to go back to the beginning. You have to go back to Shema Yisrael. That's the problem. If You know, you remember in math, we have to show our work. If you came to the wrong answer, oh, yeah. what, what would the teacher say? Go back to the beginning. Oh, damn it. You know, but if I go back to the beginning, yeah. If, there, if the answer is wrong, then you got to go back to the beginning. There was always this one kid in class that always got all the answers right. He never did any of the actual work. Chat, Chat DBT. That was, that was a soft. No, no, he did the work. He just didn't show the work. Yeah. He didn't show the work. So that means everyone is able to understand all the kaimon, Page 83 in the old print, Olakaimon, and to fulfill, called Mashiach Shalakaim, and to fulfill whatever you have the ability to fulfill, because obviously not every person can fulfill every mitzvah. What if you're not a Kayim? 
Kedar de Levi. What if you don't live in the land of Israel? What if there's no best of English? You know, obviously, whatever the opportunity you want demands of you at this moment. I mean, for, for such Shoftim, right? We cannot uh -huh. fill any of the commandments there in Shoftim. A lot of a lot of mitzvahs we can. A lot, a lot of mitzvahs in the Torah. Who said the mitzvahs in the Torah? Oh, only eighty out of the six hundred and thirteen. Only yeah, we can. Only eighty we can actually. Eighty something yeah. Yeah, but oh. most of the, most of the mitzvahs are, have to do with Israel, the base of English, agriculture. Yeah, I mean a lot of the no, do nots we don't do, but we also don't. Red have, but we, we we don't have the ability yet. So yeah, some mitzvahs are, are only written to the king gadol or or the high priest or certain things. Um, and by, and by doing this, when you do when you do a mitzvah, and remember we spoke about chapter two, the godly soul. Chapter three, we spoke about the ten, ten faculties, the ten character, the unchanging character traits of your soul. Three intellect, the seven emotional. When you do this, um, you 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 close the slabish bechol es bechin asev levushim levushlishel levushmelo. Your ten your ten character traits. Ten faculties find expression in the three and the three um, garments: thought, speech, thought, speech, uh, sp speech, and action. So, so, to summarize, we learned today. We learned something crazy. We learned two things. Number one, we learned that your garments, in a way, are, are greater than your soul, because it's via your garments that your soul achieves anything. And and and, and number two, we, we learned that Hashem gives everyone the ability to learn. There's no such thing as you don't, you can't learn. I, Rabbi Kiva started at 40. Oh, my parents weren't religious. Oh, my parents didn't give me, oh, this, or I didn't have. Yeah, so maybe you can't learn Kabbalah yet. And maybe you're not up to Gemara yet. Hashem gives everyone the ability to study, to learn. And these days, with, with uh, technology, if you're an audio learner, a video learner, whatever it is, everyone, everyone could learn. We all have the ability and the chance to, I mean, you could, you know, let me end up with one thing. There's a problem with non-Jewish music. What's the problem with non-Jewish music? Aside from the fact that singing about... Too much bass. Too much bass. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on which music you're talking about. That's right. right. What's the problem with non-Jewish, aside from the content, right? Aside from the content that, that they talk about love, cheating, murder, I don't think, you know, right? He's talking about rap. Mama being in jail. Whatever it is. Country music. Right. The problem... Listen, listen, the Hasidus explains... <laughs> Hasidus explains... When you're listening to music, music is an expression of the soul. So now you're making a choice. What, what am I connecting myself to? Right. Music is a, is, a, is a soul connection. No one ever has to teach you if it's a happy song. Or you know, with a, you know, with a, with with poetry or art, what was, what was the guy feeling? I don't know. But music, no one ever has to teach you that. You know. So the, so, so the same thing is, you make a choice. What do you want to be connected to? So not, you, you can make a choice. What do I want to connect myself to? Yeah, but that's very subjective, especially with music. Because some people feel one thing, and some people feel other things when they hear the music. When you hear a happy song, you, you feel happy. No one hears a happy song. Unless you're having a bad day, or you're no. a death metal aficionado. Or I don't know. It, depends, it still depends on the type of music. music. Yeah, again, yeah, exactly. Because some people got very upset with Walt Disney when he created his movie Fantasia. Yeah, screw Disney. I'm still upset about it. I don't, I don't know. That anti you never saw Fantasia? No. I, I Fantasia, like Disney, Disney and, his, and his animators and everybody. They took various classical pieces that were very well known, uh, and they animated the classical pieces. One of the most famous ones is the Sorcerer's Apprentice. I can't. It's okay. So they had, you know, Minnie, Mickey Mouse was supposed to be the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Uh, the Sorcerer's you know, Apprentice, is that a name of a, a that, musical piece? That's the name of a musical piece, yeah. Uh, there, were, there were some other things that, uh, that, that, that they did. A lot of people objected to it when it came out because they said, I don't feel that at all. I mean, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, yes, that had an actual story. But Beethoven's Sixth Symphony, 
I know it was the pastoral, but what makes you think that it was pastoral with Greek mythology? Okay, okay, I, you're getting too specific. What I'm trying I'm to say, what, 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 what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is that I was just a general example that you you have a choice, and God's given you this ability. When you learn there, right? You learn there. You have the ability to connect to the infinite, or you can do whatever you want. The choice is yours, and everyone can learn. All right, guys. So. Let's just turn it off. It's not so. It's not. Um, okay.